without you first.
Good morning. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Ryan Fleener. I'm the rector here at St. Luke's and on behalf of our whole parish family, it is a great joy and privilege to be able to welcome you to worship this day on this last Sunday after the Epiphany, the first Sunday before the season of Lent, and of course also a very happy Valentine's Day to each of you. I'll have more to say at the announcements about our forum this morning involving our own former associate rector, Paul Carling, and several students that he works with at the Episcopal Church at Yale. But for now, let me say that it is a great joy to be able to welcome as our guest preacher today, Brandon Chambers, a senior at Yale College and a very active member of that ministry of the Episcopal Church at Yale. So as we gather to worship God this day, this beautiful winter day in Darien. Let us stand and sing our opening hymn, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elijah were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah so it said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that t today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elijah, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will, make, will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
to the Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, our Maker, our Redeemer, and our Life Giver. Amen. Amen. Good morning. My name is Brandon Chambers, and I'm a student member at the Episcopal Church at Yale. I bring greetings from our chaplain, the Reverend Paul Carling, and the whole Episcopal Church at Yale family. I'd like to thank you for having me this Valentine's Day morning. And I would say as a college student, I'm not sure I'd say this would have been my first choice for where to spend my Valentine's Day, but I am happy that everyone I've met so far has shown me love. And today is also the last Sunday after Epiphany. Throughout this season, we have encountered Jesus making himself known in the world. We have seen him being revealed to the Magi, being presented at the temple, calling his disciples, and healing the sick throughout Galilee. Today, we encounter Jesus revealing himself to three of his disciples 
in a different, more radiant way. Let's try to picture what Peter, James, and John are feeling in the gospel reading for today. Imagine taking a hike with three of your friends when suddenly one of them starts glowing and then their clothes begin shining brilliantly. And then, as if that wasn't enough, two men appear out of nowhere and start having a chat with him. I imagine the disciples must be thinking to themselves, who is this shiny guy talking to? Did I hear him just call them Moses and Elijah? Wait, the Moses and Elijah? That's insane. We then see Peter display his early leadership skills as he chooses to intervene in Jesus' conversation with the prophets. I imagine we all know some, someone who just has to be in every conversation they hear going on. I have this one friend who will hear myself and a couple others talking and just refuses to mind his business. Even if he knows next to nothing about the topic of discussion, he must find a way to weave his words into the argument. I imagine Peter must be in a similar frame of mind when he feels the need to insert himself into this conversation that seems just a bit over his head. Never mind what they're talking about. Peter just has to get his offer in that they build each of them a tabernacle. After all, two greats of the Judaic tradition have just come to visit their companion. Not only is the glory of the ancients on full display, but also that of their friend Jesus, who, by the way, is still glowing. Despite the good intentions of the offer, Peter's attempt to make it seem like he has his wits about him deceives no one. The scripture says that he did not know what to say because he, like James and John, was terrified. I think I can share in Peter's embarrassment at his feeling of honest incapacity. I remember last summer, I was working on a research project from home which required me to meet virtually with my academic advisor every week or so. In one particular week, I remember meeting with him in the wake of the tragic news of George Floyd's killing and the first wave of demonstrations on the streets. I remember lamenting to my professor that I just couldn't figure out how to connect my research on the social and political causes of multi-ethnic communities to the imperatives of the day. I couldn't chart a path forward based on what I knew, and that just really frustrated me. My advisor's response put me right. He suggested that I resist the urge to theorize every problem I face, and rather take some time just to appreciate what it was that I was feeling. And so as a coffee-infused college student who thought he was wise beyond his years, I was shocked. A lot of the time, our hearts can do much more meaningful work than our brains. I think this is part of the lesson that we find in Jesus teaching Peter and the disciples on the mountain. The shock and awe of witnessing Jesus' transfiguration provoked Peter to do what he thought was best. In his mind, the glory of Jesus in communion with the prophets can only be enhanced by his work to establish dwellings for the three figures. In the face of this wondrous moment, Peter's instinct is to speak and to act as quickly as possible. However, the instruction from God is the opposite. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Don't do, don't speak, listen. What Peter needed to learn right then and there was that before knowledge comes understanding. As the Apostle Paul writes, it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Paul reminds us that knowledge comes not from leaning on our own understanding, rather or loving God shines in our hearts to give us true knowledge. What Peter has to learn is that he's not the one calling the shots. Rather, he himself is being called 
to submit to the divine will of Jesus, recognizing that our humanity makes us need God's love and redemption. As we close out this liturgical season of Epiphany and prepare for Lent, I think there is a message for all of us in this transfiguration experience. Throughout the coming 40 days, we are invited to engage in deep prayer and listen for the voice of God reaching out to us. In the same way that Jesus or God went away and fasted, so too are we called to engage with our humanity by prayerfully listening for God's direction. Furthermore, we are invited to recognize that we are who we are because of God's love for us and to submit ourselves to that perfect love. This is the same kind of realignment which Peter and, his, and the disciples undergo on their descents from the mountain. Jesus orders them to keep everything they had seen secret until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. I imagine the disciples must have been thinking, what do you mean? We can't say anything about this crazy hike until after someone's been risen from the dead. What does that even mean? But we now know why Jesus instructed them to keep quiet, because he is the Son of Man, and he was to suffer death on a cross for our sake. The same Jesus who was just shining brilliantly before them with Moses and Elijah would be ridiculed, beaten, and killed, only to rise again two days later. This is not to diminish the significance of this moment, but by ordering the disciples to hush up, I think Jesus meant that we need to understand Christ in his dying in order to know him in his glory. To me, that is the beauty of God's love, that Jesus knows us in our highest heights and in our lowest of lows. It is Jesus understanding us and loving us as both ruler and friend. As we leave this season behind and enter the Lenten period, we are called to engage with God's love through prayer and meditation. The same love of God that animates the world will animate our lives as we walk down the mountain with Jesus in this life. And so on this Valentine's Day, I leave you with the words of the songwriter who writes, My song is love unknown, my Savior's love to me, love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be, love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Let us pray for our own needs and the needs of others. We pray for our youth outreach partners, Trinity Jubilee Center in Lewiston and the White Earth Tribe in Minnesota. We pray for everyone on our parish intercession list. Today we pray especially for Judy. We celebrate the birth of Kyle Grace Edwards, daughter of Matt and Jenny Edwards. We also celebrate the anniversary of the ordination of Reverend Don Stegelman to the priesthood in 2009, and in whose honor the altar flowers are given. We give thanks for the lives of Dustin Smith, Joseph Dorsey, Homer and Mabel Wagner, Ruthetta and Howard Connell, and John and Aileen Potter, in whose memory the altar flowers are also given. And we commend to God's care and keeping Holly Russell's father, Christopher Gates, who died this past month. We also commend to God's care and keeping Roger Gilbert and Peg Weeks, both of whom died this past week. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth. Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Would you stand, please? My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Again, it is a joy and privilege to be able to welcome you to worship on this last Sunday after the Epiphany, and again, a joy to welcome Brandon. Thank you for your words this morning, and we look forward to the forum uh, in just a few minutes. And if you are new and joining us, perhaps for the first time this Sunday, we are especially glad that you have joined us in worship and hope that you will reach out and introduce yourself so that we can be in touch about the life in Christ we share and the journey of faith that we are on together. Immediately following this morning's service, there is an opportunity for coffee and fellowship on Zoom at 11 o'clock, and then immediately following that, at 11.15, is our adult education forum. Brandon will be joined by another student from Yale and Paul Carling, our former associate, now the chaplain at the Episcopal Church at Yale, to talk about faith on campus. Then from noon until 1 o'clock, there's an opportunity to receive communion here in the church for those who desire to receive the sacrament this day. It will actually be our last Sunday offering communion in the church from 12 to 1 because beginning next Sunday, on the first Sunday in Lent, we resume outdoor worship in the parking lot at 9 o'clock, including the opportunity to receive communion in person during the service. So I invite you, if you have been coming at noon, to bundle up, bring your beach chair, and join us beginning next Sunday at nine o'clock. That outdoor worship actually begins a few days earlier. It begins this Wednesday. This Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, a day of solemn prayer and the beginning of that 40-day Lenten journey to Easter. We'll have three outdoor services at 9 a.m., at noon, a service especially appropriate for families at four o'clock in the afternoon, and then we'll live stream a liturgy here from the church at seven o'clock. I hope that you will join us on that day as we make a right beginning of our Lenten journey. Again, next Sunday is Lent. We will have that 9 a.m. Eucharist beginning for the first time, and we'll also be welcoming another guest preacher, this time from the Divinity School at Yale, uh, Andrew McGowan, who is the dean of Berkeley Divinity School, will be with us next Sunday for Lent. You should receive in the mail this week your Lenten mailer that outlines all sorts of opportunities to engage and grow in your faith this Lent. I especially commend to you grow groups. These are opportunities to be in small group fellowship with your fellow parishioners to find some piece of your life of faith that you would like to grow in this Lent, whether it's your life of prayer, your life and work as a parent, your uh, fellowship with other people who are learning to rest and listen for God's word as a meditative practice. There's much more information in that mailer, but I hope that you will join us for that, for one of those grow groups in this season of Lent. As we come now to the Eucharist, before we do that, we do have a special blessing this day, which is that our knitting ministry uh, has prepared many beautiful prayer shawls Uh, to share with parishioners who are in need, who need to feel wrapped and embraced by the love and prayers of this community. That is true in all sorts of seasons of, of of grief and loss, of struggle and of confusion, but especially in this season of COVID that we are all walking through. And so our knitters have prepared these beautiful shawls, and we will bless them this day. Typically, we bless them one by one, but it's nice to be able to see them all together. And if perhaps you have a shawl at home that you've received, it's already been blessed, but you can know that we'll bless it again this day. We also have, Susan Delp is bringing it forward, these wonderful uh, blankets that have been, have been knit in a way by our children for our baptism families. We are celebrating baptisms this afternoon, one family at a time, and so our youngest knitters have knit those to share with the newly baptized. So would you stand, please, as we offer God's blessing on these prayer shawls. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, on this Valentine's Day and in this season and every season, we are reminded that you embrace us as your beloved daughters and sons. We give you thanks for your Holy Spirit that shines the light of your presence into our hearts. We give you thanks for the ministry of our knitting group, and we ask that these prayer shawls would be for those who receive them signs and sacraments of your presence and your enveloping and embracing love. 
and we ask it all in Christ's most holy name. Amen. And thank you, Susan, for bringing these on behalf of our prayer shawl ministry. We appreciate that very much. And as we continue with the Eucharist, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
This is my son, the beloved, my chosen one, Alleluia. As the choir sang that beautiful anthem, you'll notice our Alleluia banner has entered the church. It is a symbol of the praise of this season that we will, at the end of this service, bury for a time as we fast from that word of praise in this coming season of Lent, only to rediscover it at the joy of Easter. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, We remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Luke, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. In union, dear God, with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you myself, my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I tie myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live now and forever in your love. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen.
we're now in the crypt below the church and this is the spot where the Alleluia's will lie for the 40 days of Lent. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks that even during Lent, you are with us. And today we lay our Alleluia's to rest for the season of Lent. May they have peace until we retrieve them again. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.